What's going on, everybody? It's me. It's me. It's the PR. I am me, and I am back. Uh, I am here with John Asher, otherwise known as Gary from Weird Science or other projects that you may know him from. Uh, how's it going? What's up, everybody? Woo! <laughs> yes. So everybody in in podcast land. Hello, podcast land. I think they, podcasts are better than, than actual radio for some reason. I don't know why that is, but I feel like it's better. I just feel like it can be more personal. You can get real details from people, and you actually get to know the people you're talking to. Yeah, I kind of like those Sirius XM radio shows, guest podcast shows, rather than actual radio. Yeah, I agree. Just Yeah, it gives you more oomph, I guess you can say. Yeah, for but, sure. But, uh, yeah, man, hopefully, hopefully, uh, everything goes well with your, you know, your projects and everything in the future, but we're going to talk about the past for a second. You no played Gary, Gary, um, from Weird Science. And, Gary uh, Wallace. Gary yes, Wallace. Gary Wallace. I, I wanted to say Gary Wallace, but I, I, knowing me, I thought I was going to mess up and say Gary Wyatt, so I just didn't even, I didn't even try it. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, what's going down? What's going down? What do you want to know? Ask me anything. I just want to ask you about how did you get the role? How did you come up with it? You know, what about the role made you want to do it? Um, you know, when I was a bit younger, I was a huge fan of John Hughes and all of his movies, Breakfast Club, or Sixteen Candles, um, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, and of, of course. course weird science uh i love that movie i mean i watched it so many times i think so many guys that were my age i was in high school at the time wanted to make a girl on their computer oh i was about Uh, to say i know y'all weren't watching it for the movie no 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 and uh no not at all and uh i just i my agent called me and he was like hey man you we've got an audition for something we think you'd be perfect for it's called weird science and um i was so excited and i remember borrowing from anthony michael hall uh how he played gary i kind of borrowed some of the things that he did uh i almost mimicked him a little bit in 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 some of my auditions um and i ended up getting the part i was so excited now you do kind of look like gary i mean anthony michael hall just a little when you had your hair in that certain style. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm going to ask you this question because it usually is my first question. Just wasn't this time because you know, we had other things to do first to talk about. But uh, what was a typical Friday night for you growing up? Any time that you think is the best memory for you? Wow. Uh, in my childhood, I mean, when I was younger, like 14, 15, I was such a huge fan of Ghostbusters. I think we would try and hunt ghosts on a Friday night, <laughs> like literally like get a, get a Ouija board out and like talk to ghosts and then try and hunt them down. And we would dress up as Ghostbusters and like go and try. And, and I think, you know, the mind is a very powerful thing. Like your mind can play tricks on you. Like I'm, I thought that we definitely had some paranormal activity going on in our house. Um, But who knows? It was probably just my childhood stuff. That would be a Friday. As I got older, you know, a Friday, you know, especially getting your driver's license would be like, you know, we got to find out where, where, where the girls are hanging out, you know, like let's go or let's rent a movie or see who we block. We bump into at blockbuster, you know, and, and try to, score with a hot girl and maybe kiss a girl and like oh my god you know that was exciting and then my friday nights as i got a little bit older turned into you know what what movie could i see what big movie was coming out you know go to the theater and catch a movie i've always liked movies um i remember when i saw top gun for the first time it completely changed me it made me want to become an actor because at first i wanted to be a fighter pilot when i saw that movie but then i was like that's going to take forever but then yeah. I realized if you could be an actor, you could do everything. I could be a fighter pilot. I could be a cop. I could be an attorney. You can play all these roles, you know, and it's and it's uh, vaulted up and, and saved on uh, digital information for years to come. So it's pretty cool. And that's why Weird Science was so fun. 
I mean, I got to play so many different characters. It was unbelievable. It seemed like you almost played almost every movie that came out in the 90s at that time or the 80s. It felt like it. Yeah, it felt like it for sure. Oh, man. that's Honestly, that all sounds great. Top Gun, Tom Cruise. So Tom Cruise is one of your favorites, or just a movie that you like? I actually was fortunate enough to meet Tom Cruise when uh, a friend of mine sold her house to him. Ooh, and okay. I was, yeah, I was playing tennis at her house. And he came up the driveway and he was installing, I think he was with his security team. And he was so nice and so cool. And I just remember like, he didn't have to give me any attention, you know, but he like, he was like, hi, nice to meet you. He shook my hand. I mean, he was busy doing stuff. He didn't know who I was. He didn't know or care. I don't think, but, but he was so, I mean, I walked away going, that's why that guy's Tom Cruise, man. Like he just, <laughs> you just, you, he just felt cool. Like he was just cool. It was, I don't know. I just, you know, I would love to work with him again. I would, I would, I would love to maybe direct something for him or uh, act alongside him. That would be awesome. Uh, honestly, I tell you, that's better than some people. I'm pretty sure some people came up to him and they was like, "Do the, do the, do the, uh, do the slide thing, slide, or do the oh. sing that song." Risky business. Yeah. Thank you for checking out the Promise Nostalgia Podcast. We'll be right back, but first, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at KVNG Prime Time. Well, let's talk about weird science because you work with Michael and Vanessa. Honestly, you can say his name. I, honestly, I don't want to get the names wrong. No problem. It, Michael Manasseri and Vanessa. Manasseri. I, I, yeah. I know Vanessa ain't. I didn't want to leave out one name and, and keep the other. Manasseri. I got I to gotta stick to Manasseri. I got to remember it. How to pron- pronounce it. Manasseri. It's a, well, you don't want to say his name wrong because I think he's tied to some mob families. So be careful. <laughs> yeah, I, that's why I just say Michael. Michael M yeah. is good. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great guy. He's been, uh, he and I have, have gone on to make movies together and he just produced a movie called give me Liberty, uh, that is doing really, really well. Um, okay. and he's a really good director and he's a great actor and he's a producer and a writer and he's a Jack of all trades. Um, I'm really proud of that guy. He's done some really good work. Yeah. And then, you guys basically got to do everything, basically. Like, they just said, here, we have a budget. We're going to make you a scuba diver this week. We're going to make you a mermaid next week. And then next week, we're going to make you a Phantom on the Opera or something. Yeah, we were, oh, my God, we did it all. We were vampires. We were secret agents, spies. We were little green munchkin men. Uh, we were rock stars. Oh, we, uh, I mean, we did. We really did do everything. We were hippies. We were pirates. Uh, we went back in time uh, to Roman times. Um, what else? Oh my God! We um, we went and saw uh, Frankenstein, and everybody <laughs> thinks that Frankenstein is the monster, but the monster no, is the monster. Is the doctor. Frankenstein yeah. is the is the doctor. He's the one that created the monster. Um, so we just we, actually, we saw that. Actually, is in your intro of the the television show Frankenstein, which is crazy because my yeah. grandfather was the original producer of Dracula in 1931, and oh, okay. then he produced The Bride of Frankenstein, which is nuts. And then I went off. It's just so weird that that would be. Yeah, crazy. that is a liar. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that sounds that sounds like. I'm gonna say it's not like a dream, but that's just amazing. You get all these things, and yeah, every everything is synchronized. You know, everything's got some synchronicity to it. While we're talking you know, about working with people, excuse yeah. me, my bad. I didn't mean to interrupt or anything. That's right. Just about to say why why we talk about working with people. How was it working with Lee? Uh, Lee AKA Ferguson? Chet. Yes, AKA oh Chet. Oh my god, it was awesome. You know, that guy always had so much energy. And he always made everybody laugh. I mean, if you watch even the pilot episode of Weird Science, if you watch when Chet first comes back into town and he's eating a submarine sandwich and his parents are asking him, how long are you going to be here? And he says, 
unless the commies get to their act together, I'm going to be here for the long haul. And then he grabs his brother and burps in his brother's face. He was improv that, and you'll see me laugh. I actually turn my head to the side, and I'm laughing, and they kept that take. Uh, but there were many, many times, if you watch any scene where Lee is in a scene with me, I, I, I broke so many times I would laugh. I, and it, to the point where the producers actually, John Landis himself, came to my trailer, and he said, hey, you can't laugh when the other actor's doing it. And I was like, I'm sorry, he's funny. I don't know what to tell you, dude. Like, I'm so sorry. I can't help. It's a, it's a, it, he's just so funny. And I ended up working with Lee several times. I put Lee in a couple of movies. I put him in a movie I directed called Chick Flick. Then I put him in another movie called Diamonds with uh, Kurt Douglas, Lauren Bacall, and Dan Aykroyd. He played the, um, Ooh, okay. the, uh, what do you call those guys? They're called, it's like a crossing guard, but it's not a crossing guard. It's a wrong thing. He's a border patrolman at the Canadian oh. border in the United okay. States. It's a great scene he has with all of them. And then I put him as the starring role in a movie about three years ago called Tooken, T-O-O-K-E-N. And it's the spoof on the Taken franchise. Uh, and he plays the Liam Neeson character. He's hilarious. That's definitely worth a watch. I'm going to find you. I'm going to kill you. Uh, that's right. That's right. I have a particular set of skills. Yes. And uh, last but not least, as far as the main cast, how was it working with Vanessa? Amazing. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, it's one thing, like, to come to work and you're on a television show. That's like, oh, my God, amazing, right? Then you're doing a comedy. So everybody's laughing all day long. That's the second amazing thing. Then you've got a beautiful co-star. So, I mean, every day I got to look at her and she was so beautiful and so smart and so kind and never, ever, ever got angry. I remember uh, the only time I saw her get somewhat angry, I guess, was... um, was because oh that's right we were it was like we were in the uh in the bathroom and the bullies come to beat us up and she turns the bathroom into an elevator and the elevator is going up and she opens the sliding door onto her thumb and it crushed her thumb and i remember her going son of a bitch and i was like oh no like i was like wow she's really angry but then she was like and i don't blame her she had a big cut on her thumb and they taped her up and she went right back to work. No problem. And I've never, she's such a, she's such a, a great, wonderful spirit. She's a really great woman. That sounds amazing. Honestly, I probably wouldn't have been able to do any kind of scenes because I, I don't know. I guess I'm just, I can't hold it together. So you guys got it better than me. Especially, you guys did like a whole Baywatch episode. I don't know how you were able to just look cool and act. That, don't know. Couldn't do it. We're, oh, oh. Well, I mean. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you know, probably could because you, uh, you were the mermaid. But still. I, I was wrapped up in prosthetics. But the thing of it is, is, you know, I think when you work with anybody for a certain amount of time, you know, you start to develop. Uh, yeah. You want to be protective of them and you know, she ended up being more like a sister to me, even though I wish she was, you know, <laughs> I wish she was uh, uh, my, my girlfriend or my wife. But especially at the time, that's what I would be like, oh, my God, wouldn't it be rad. But but she ended up being like a sister. And, you know, us three boys, we ended up being very protective of her because people would randoms would show up on set and try and take pictures of her. And people would climb walls yeah, that's, and that's creepy. And when we were shooting that Baywatch episode. We had all kinds of people with cameras and we were more, I think at that point you just become protective, um, yeah. you know, and I think that was a better feeling because, you know, I've got a really good long time friend now and she's awesome. I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone is amazing. I want to ask you actually, is there anybody that you wish you could work with that's, not here anymore that you wish you can work with somebody that passed away yes um that's a great question and there are a lot of greats out there i mean 
Heath Ledger. Oh, really okay. Cool to do something with him. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, what a gone too soon. I mean, what a great talent. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've really worked with, I have worked with a lot of people that have already pat like Adam West. I worked with him on Weird oh, Science, and okay. um, I've worked and, uh, with Kirk Douglas, but he's still right. alive. And I worked with Lauren Bacall. She passed away. Um, I don't know, like if I had like a really like, um, I really think, I mean, James Dean, that would be freaking right. Oh, okay. You James know? Dean. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Uh, James Dean, Keith Ledger, and then uh, maybe Audrey Hepburn. And I don't know if she's alive or not, but I don't. I think she might have passed. I think, and that's horrible to say if that's not true. But I think, I, I think that she has passed. I'm not sure. Um, I, I I have two in mind. Uh, one is John Hughes, of course. John Hughes is. Oh yeah, well yeah. Is, great and then i would like to work with john candy because he is great too. oh yeah yeah that's a good i like both of those yes those are yeah, great but they're they're those people are you know good people that set great examples for us you know things to strive for so when when people pass it's good for us to look at that as an example of what how we can make better films or how we can at least try and make films as good as you know but John Hughes just had such a knack for character and an understanding of, of youth. Uh, he really just knew how to explore that perfectly. Yeah. I, yeah. I never see anybody do it like that. Like he made his own genre of like movies of people that understand how it's not just a perfect, uh, you know, the perfect uh, teen as displayed in these different movies and stuff. You no, know, some people are 80. Some people are not as black and white. So, you know, it's uh, good that he was able to put those things out there. Not so cookie cutter. But man, yeah. we gotta we gotta talk about stuff that you're doing now as well. Anything sure. you want to share about us? Like, you know, any projects you have coming up or anything you've done in the past five years or so that people <laughs> may not have. I'm just saying, the past five years, people may not have known. You know, when when you five get older years. and you're a child actor, some people think right. that they just go away. Like, uh, for example, maybe Lindsay Lohan or uh, the Olsen twins or something, you know. Well, the Olsen twins are so incredibly wealthy that I don't think that – I'm sure people, if they wanted to work, they could, but they just choose not to because they're, they've yeah. got billions of dollars. If it's billions, I don't know. They have enough money that they're happy. You know, and at the end of the day, you can't take the money with you, right? So just have enough to be comfortable. Um, okay. I think that uh, I, I do. I do have a couple of things. Uh, I've got a new Netflix series that I'm only in the first season. I'm only in two episodes, and it's called Soundtrack. Okay. Uh, Madeline Stowe is in it. Um, Jenna Dewan is in it. Um, a bunch of great young actors are in it and it's cool. I can't give them too many details away except that it's a drama musical. Mm. I can tell you that drama. Uh, music. Okay. Drama musical. And it's going to be on Netflix. I think in this, maybe it's, they said November, but I think maybe it'll be December now. I have no idea. Um, okay. And then I can tell you that if the show gets picked up, I'm going to be more in the second season for sure. Um, that's all I can tell you about that one. And then I'm developing uh, a movie right now called Pregnant in Las Vegas that we start shooting in February um, oh. about four women that are best friends that go to Vegas on a baby moon. I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but but when people are pregnant right before they give birth, they go on like a honeymoon, kind of like a one last hurrah before the baby is uh, born. And this is the story of these four women that go to Vegas to have fun. Uh, so it's basically The Hangover meets Bridesmaids. It's crazy. Um, okay. That's a big comedy. I'm really excited about that one. I, I put a lot of work into it, um, and the writer did a great job. So uh, it, it's going to be a good project. And then uh, next month, I'm supposed to start shooting a movie called Zombie Bride. Um, okay. 
and that I'm really excited about as well. But it's a very independent movie, small budget, but it's like Weekend at Bernie's meets a zombie movie. Um, oh, where this wow. guy, his, his wife gets turned into a zombie and he has to find her because she's running around town killing people. Uh, <laughs> it's really fun and ridiculous and over the top. Um, so that I'm kind of excited about. Um, and then I just finished writing a movie called Shepherd Secret about mm. okay. three best friends that discover one of the one of the friends is actually an alien. Um, it's really cool. High school film. It's awesome. Um, and then what else I got going on? And then I'm developing stuff here and there and, uh, you know, just keeping it busy, keeping it busy. Oh, and I have a short that I just starred in called Me Too Nice. Uh, Me Too directed Nice. By, yeah, directed and written and directed by Jamie Anderson. And um, it's about the Me Too movement. And it's about a guy that doesn't know how to act anymore around women because he doesn't want to offend them. So he's trying to be really sweet, but he's being too sweet to the point where it's ruining his life. So Uh, one one night he goes to a fountain and he makes a wish and he wakes up the next morning and he's saying way too much now he's now he's gone the complete opposite direction so it's a comedy dark comedy it's fun okay is there anything any movie or show that's coming up that you're excited to watch as a just as a fan or as a you know person who likes to watch things well i'm gonna see the joker tonight oh okay excited to see that i'm nervous to see it too i i hear a lot of people are saying don't go to the movie theater you know, you never know. Some nut job might walk in there. I hope that 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 nobody that won't happen. It makes me so sad to think that we have to be scared to go to see a movie. That's crazy. Um, but uh, a friend of mine, Todd Phillips, wrote it and directed it, so I'm excited to see his work. I'm excited to see Joaquin's work as well. Um, and what else am I excited about? I'm trying to think about in the television side. I mean, I just saw the announcement for Stranger Things 4. I had no idea yeah. that they were doing a 4. I didn't know that. But maybe yeah, they did 3 and 4 back to back. They must. They have. probably recorded it back to back and then now they're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited about that for sure. Um, yeah, that's it right now. I'm going to see Joker tonight and then, uh, and then uh, Stranger Things and, you know, just chilling, man. Living in Hollywood. Living the dream. I know uh, for me, I'm excited to see Eddie Murphy's new movie, uh, Dolomite. Even though I don't know any much about that much about Rudy Ray, Ray Moore, Dolomite just it's an Eddie Murphy movie. So I just want to see it. To just see how it how it is. Dolomite is my name, and fucking up motherfuckers is my game. Oh, that's right. I saw a billboard for it. That's what that's Eddie. I didn't even know that was Eddie Murphy. That's crazy. Oh, you did? Yeah, he he looks, he looks, he he looks like the actual uh, person that plays him. And then of course you got you know coming to America and all that other stuff. I mean coming to, yeah coming to America and all that other stuff coming out. But that's 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 for later. You got Bad Boys Three or Bad Boys, Bad Boys Three. I yeah. don't know. See, here's the thing. Will Smith looks great. Martin Lawrence <laughs> looks trippy in that trailer. <laughs> I'm just like, what the hell? Yeah, he it looks, is. Yeah. He looks, I mean, I don't know. He, I, I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? He doesn't look like the old Martin Lawrence, man. He doesn't, but he is so, it's so weird because in the first movie, I don't want to make it seem like an insult, but in the first movie, he's small. He's like really, really small. Like his face. You can see the bones in his face in the first movie. Second movie, right. he's still small, but his face is getting like puffier. I guess you right. can call it. Now right. this movie, his face, his cheeks are just it looks like he just got his cheeks poked out all the time. And <laughs> I'm not I'm not trying to it, that's what it looks like. Like I don't know. Man, if, you're gonna get a call from Martin. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, was gonna I say, hear you. No, no, no. I uh I hear you. He just looks a little different. I, I Hopefully the movie's fun. I really like those movies. I know that I've done my research on you. I know that you love action buddy movies. That's your thing, right? Yeah, Rush Hours. Uh, I like the Central Intelligence. You know, Beverly Hills Cop. So yeah, I'm I'm ready for it. I told you my Beverly Hills Cop story. 
I should tell it to you. To oh, yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Tell the audience about this, this story, this story here. This is crazy. So John Landis, who was my executive producer on Weird Science, he was directing Beverly Hills Cop 3. And on when we're shooting Weird Science um, back in the day, all of the productions that were going on at Universal were monitored by a system called Big Brother. And it would go up to the tower where the executives were so that they could tune in to any soundstage on the lot and see what was going on at any given time. So I didn't know this, but so John Landis comes to our set and he says, uh, what are you guys doing? I, I, I said, oh, we're in, the, we're, we're in the middle of a lighting setup. And he said, well, why don't you come check out? I'm about to film this scene on Beverly Hills Cop. I said, great. So I go back to the soundstage and all of a sudden these security guards come and they push us up against the wall and they're like, make a hole, make a hole for Eddie, make some room, make some room. And everybody's like backing up, backing up. And Eddie Murphy walks on. He just looks so cool. And I was like, oh my God, that's Eddie Murphy. Like, that's really Eddie Murphy. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, it's funny when you're a kid and you watch something, you actually develop feelings for people you know they become your friends in your imagination you're like you know <laughs> yeah. i can identify with that guy but he stopped and he's like you and he pointed at me and i was like what and i'm looking around me and he goes yeah you come here and i was like oh god he's gonna beat me up what did i do um and he goes he's like you are so funny i was like what and he was like i was just watching you in my trailer i was watching your rehearsals you were doing the whole thing about bikini beach and it was a history class got turned into the history of the bikini because uh, Lisa was trying to make school for us fun. And I'm doing this whole speech on, on bikinis. And he said it made him laugh so hard. And then he walked off and he gave me a pat on the back. And I'm telling you, to this day, that is the single greatest compliment I've ever had in my life. Oh, Eddie man. Murphy told me I was funny. Like, I have to believe that I'm funny now. Like, I kept no oh, choice. Oops. Of course. Andy Murphy, too. Oh, funny. Oh, dude. I gee, It was really, like, I hope, I that's somebody that I would like to work with for sure. He was, uh, he was really, really nice. He was such a sweet guy. Yeah, he's very nice. So now I got to see Dolomite. I got to support him, man. I got to support oh, him. Of course. This is, this is his first rated R movie since maybe the 1990s, since life, maybe. So, I want to see how that really? is. Yeah, so I believe that, so. That, what about that movie, um, Bowfinger? Was that rated R or PG? Maybe, uh, PG? maybe, maybe TV, maybe PG-14 or something, but it's not, you know. This is like, cuss words out of nowhere. <laughs> this is just. Now you got me excited. All right. Well, I'm yeah. excited to see that for sure. I might just send you a, a trailer after this. You can watch it on your own time, but. Uh, yeah, send it to me for sure. Do you have any more stories about, you know, people coming up to you or anything like that or any stories like that? I can tell you a funny story that, you know, we were USA Network. We were their first original show. So okay. it was the first time that primetime television was moving to cable television. So people weren't really aware that we even existed. They were really trying to get views. And then they built a show called duck man and put that on after us. And we, wait a minute, wait a were, minute. D duck yeah. man. Duck man. <laughs> yeah. Jason uh. Alexander did the voice for duck man. All right. Seinfeld. Yeah. Crazy. Actually, they animated us into an episode of duck man. It's crazy. Oh, wow. So fun. Huh? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, we were going to the Cable Ace Awards, which was, they don't do them anymore, but it was a big deal. They had made an award ceremony just for cable shows. And Michael and I thought we were so, we were going to be the talk of the town there. You know, it's Cable Ace Awards. <laughs> so, we get in a They have together. to recognize us. Exactly. We get in a limo and we drive to the theater where they're doing this big event and the driver pulls over right at the door. And I was like, no, 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 keep going. Go to the end of the red carpet. We want to walk the whole red carpet, the whole thing. 
He was like, okay, and he drives us all the way down the block. See, he already where knew. all these media people are and all the press is there and everything. And we get out of the car and we walk the red carpet. And nobody knew who the hell we were. Nobody <laughs> took a picture. No flashbulbs went off. Nobody asked a question. Nothing. Nothing. Not one thing. It was the most humbling, embarrassing moment of my life. I remember it perfectly. I was like, nobody knows who the hell we are, dude. And the show, now, to my defense, the show had only been on for, I think, one season. Like, nobody at that time knew who we were. As the show grew in popularity, then um, I started to get more and more recognized. And I think that the place that it really happened was Las Vegas. I went to Las Vegas once. I think it was during season three. And people were coming up to me left and right. Gary Wallace! Gary Wallace! I was like, (laughs) oh, my God. You know? Because I had that ridiculous hair. Yeah, the hair. hair. That hair was, you know, not intentional. That I was doing a movie called Double Dragon. And I was playing the role of a mohawk. And we all had to have mohawks. So they shaved our heads into mohawks. And the only thing good, I'll tell you, the only thing good about having a mohawk is when you're walking alone on the streets, Nobody bothers you. That's the only thing that's good about having a mohawk. <laughs> you can walk anywhere at any time of night. That's the only thing. Other than that, it's the worst thing ever, a mohawk. It's not comfortable. You look like an idiot. It's ridiculous. Um, uh, so I went in. They called me and said, "You got? we got this show, Weird Science. We want you to read for it. And I was like, I have a mohawk right now. What am I going to do? So I, I parted my hair in the middle and flopped it over the sides so that it would hide where I was bald and they asked me when I came in, I'm like, I'm sorry. I know this hair is ridiculous, but I'm doing reshoots on a movie. And they were like, no problem. And it ended up becoming Gary's style. Yeah. And that's how, that's For how sure. I got that hairstyle. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I want to ask you like one or two more questions. And we got to get up out of here on the end of the road. Uh, speaking of like when you were doing the show and stuff, did you, cause I, didn't watch the show when it was on or didn't see any other shows around that time when y'all show was on. So did you guys mm-hmm. shoot any bumpers or anything? Like, you know, when you're watching another show and like Gary and, and Wyatt will pop up on the bottom of the screen and say like, watch our show? Yes, we did. We did. There was a lady that did a show called Up All Night, which was they would run like B movies late at night on USA and we would pop up and be like, Coming up next, weird science, you know, and I, was, you know, I, I could slip right into that voice because Gary has a very distinct voice and it was very much, you know, I was like, Wyatt, what are we going to do? You know what I mean? Like, it's just, that's just, that's the way I was. So it would always be like, um, uh, Hey Wyatt, what are you doing this Friday night? I don't know, Gary, what are you doing? Well, I think we should watch weird science. Yeah. And then we'd give each other a high five. (laughs) If you actually think about how ridiculous that bumper is, it's like the two people that are in the show are going to watch the show about themselves. Really weird. Hey. <laughs> I mean, they, they do have a magic all. genie. They have a magic genie, that's, so they can. That's that's true. That's true. Um, but yeah, that's that's that was uh, those were the only types of bumpers that we did. Uh, I know some people they do the because <laughs> I I see some now they go all out. They have to walk all through the screen. Walk all through, yeah. like had the whole cast walk through eating popcorn and stuff. So yeah, <laughs> all right. So uh, we're coming to <laughs> we're coming to the end of the road. Is there anything you want to tell the people about John Asher? Um, I mean, if you want to follow me on the old Instagram, you guys can uh, check me out at the real John Asher on Instagram. Um, And I do have an announcement, so it does pay to stick it out and listen to the entire podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, What if it is news? What is it? We're going to bring Weird Science back. We're going to do a reboot. Ooh, okay, reboot. That's right. And uh, Give us any details. Of course I can. Uh, I can tell you that Gary and Wyatt uh, were no longer talking to each other, and (laughs) Gary now... He made an app on his phone, and now he's a like a multimillionaire. And Wyatt's family lost all his money during the crash of the stock market. 
So Wyatt drives like an Uber or he does DoorDash or something. And they both have daughters. And okay. of course, they're, it's the first year of high school and their daughters go to Farber High and they become best friends. And they're total nerds. Uh, and Lee is now the principal of the school. Chet is now the principal oh, of the school. Oh, that traitor. <laughs> oh, <Yeah. my> <laughs> and uh, talked about yeah. assistant scampy. That's right. Well, he's not. He's he's principal, principal Chet Donnelly, oh. um, and um, the girls are getting bullied at school, and they're in their room one night. And they're having a sleepover and they say, hey, man, what about that story your dad told us about the genie? And she's like, oh, my dad always makes up stories. There's never been a magic genie. And they're like, well, what if it's true? What if it's totally possible? What if they did build a girl on their computer? And she's like, get a hold of yourself, man. And they go up into the attic and they find Wyatt's computer. Uh And they plug it in and Lisa comes to life in front of them. And the girls are like, oh, my God, we have a magic genie. And they turn Lisa into a hot 23-year-old dude. And now they've got that. So it's the whole adventure is Wyatt and I are trying to get our genie back, trying to get Lisa back. But we also want to, you know, make sure that our daughters are happy. So mm. it's, a, it's an adventure. It's a crazy, fun adventure. And we're excited. Okay. We're excited. Yeah. So well, more to come that- is what I'm telling you. More yeah, to more to come. More to come. That yeah, sounds. Thank you so much, by the way. You're such a good interviewer. Oh, I got to find other people. I'm gonna find. I'm gonna find some more of my uh, quote-unquote Hollywood friends to do a podcast <laughs> with you because I think you're fantastic. Oh, thank you. Seriously, thank you. That is all amazing. One more time, because we are at the end of the road. If you want to get them your uh, your social medias, hit them one more time. With the real John Asher at Instagram, the real John Asher. And you'll see pictures of me and my son, and it's all normal stuff. It's just Instagram. But, um, you know, I try not to spend too much time on the Instagram. But when I do, I, I, think, I'm, I think I'm a legitimate good poster. <laughs> hey, everybody is a good poster when they think they are. So you may be. Or you may not be. Who knows? Maybe maybe you post like a picture of you and, you know, you have somebody. Why did he post this picture of himself? You know. It's true. There's there's haters everywhere. You just got to ignore them. Haters are just sad people. It's all good. <laughs> you and I met on Instagram, though, so that's cool. Yeah. Fun story I'm going to tell real quick is uh, I watch, like, I watch a nostalgic show or a movie or something. I post it. And I just happened to uh, be watching Weird Science, and I posted Michael, Vanessa, and <clears throat> excuse me, and John. And he was like, "Well, I see you got a, you know, you got a podcast. I'd like to be on." And then after that, we started talking, and it was great. John is there amazing. You, you guys really, really should follow his work. Look out for Pregnant in Vegas because that sounds that sounds awesome. I'm going to get you tickets to the premiere, kid. We'll get you down there. Oh, that would be time. amazing. That would be go. amazing. But, unfortunately, we have to cut this time short. So, any any last words before we get up out of here? Just um, smile. Everybody should <laughs> take a moment and smile. Go out there and be positive. Don't be so hard on yourselves. And spread the love. That's it. Smile. Everybody needs to smile now and then. Yep. You gotta, you gotta yep. hold it out because you can't just smile. But you gotta smile. You gotta hold right. it. Hold yep. it for everybody. Share it. Share the love. Share the love. You heard it here first, folks. Now, from John, from me, that's all I have to say. He said all he has to say, unless you know he comes back, which we'll be lucky. We'll be happy to have you. But. So all I got to say, prime time is all the time. We are out.